Now let's talk a little bit more about our project browser here on the left. Anything that lives here in this list of elements of, of things, this is the DNA of your file, okay? So if I open this tree to families, right, you can see all of this preloaded families in here as far as what lives in this file. If you are looking for something that you need to load in here that doesn't exist, for example, under structural columns, we have a concrete column and a steel column, a W-shaped column. Let's just say you need a wood timber column. That means you need to load it in. All right. So when you look at this list of elements that in the project browser, it's the DNA of the file. Okay. So if I go up here and I minimize my families, this is just a starting view template. You can modify this as you see fit. Right, this level one and level two analytical, I can delete that. I can delete a site. You remember you can do anything that you want in your Revit file. All right. These are just 2D views right here that are populated. See the word views? So these are just 2D views that are populated right here out of the box. The families are the DNA, right? You can drag and drop elements from there. But another cool little option is if you right click here and go to browser organization, you have a couple of out of the box sorting um, titles here and options, right? If I go to sort by discipline and hit apply, you can see on the left on my project browser how things are going to change. If I hit apply, now I only have structural discipline. So let's hit OK here and let's open one of these views you can see how they're organized now let's change this level one let me go into level one you can see I got level one and level two open and now on the bottom left hand corner if I hit my properties palette and I want to look at the properties of this level one and I change the discipline of my view to say let's make it architectural now let's go back to our project browser at the bottom left hand corner now you can see that it moved level one and it added an architectural discipline option because that's what we've told Revit that we want to view our DNA, our project browser. So that is something to be very mindful of when you're setting up your, um, your file, if uh, you're setting up a template. It's a uh, Right here, under the browser organization, you can create new ones to really customize how you want to see it. Um, if you're just starting off, I recommend just leaving it at, at all because you definitely don't want to get into the habit of getting too custom too soon. It becomes difficult to find things. Um, but it's good to know that those options exist. Now, when we talk about properties, everything in Revit has a property. Right now, you can see in my tabs that I have here, I only have level one and level two, and I am active in my level one floor plan. Right, This is a 2D bird's eye view. But you can see that I am populated here with properties. What I see here are view properties that just relate to this view. When we think of a view property, Think of your window at home, okay? You look out the window and you see other houses, you see cars driving by. That is the model. Remember, we are translators from the real world to the virtual world. When you look out your window at home, that is your model, right? You can go out there and touch these real things. But the window of your home, that is a view, okay? Just like this level one is a bird's eye view. You're looking down flat at your building, at your model. So when you think of your window at home and you're looking out of your window, and let me, uh, let me look at something here. Here we go, and we go into the, these properties here. If you're looking out of your window, you can tell Revit what you want your window to filter. You can filter by discipline. Look, I just want to see you know, structural elements. I don't care about 
nice paint or any, anything like that. I want to see the skeletal structure of that building, right? So you can tell Revit what you want to see. So think of these views as windows in your home that you can write on with a Sharpie on your window glass. You can write things here in a 2D view that won't show up in the 3D real life view, okay? Now let's place a column down. I like columns, they're a good example. If I place a column down and I escape twice, you can see that I'm still active in my column tool. My mouse is, is still, has a little silhouette there and I escape twice. You see what happens to my properties palette? It went back to the properties of my view. That's the default view that I'm in. Now if I select my column, you can see now my properties on the left completely change. Now it's giving me properties for the column. Okay, I can change where I want the base to go, where I want the, the, top, the top level to go. I can change everything related to this column. I can even change what kind of column I want this to be. This drop down list right here is called the type selector. Okay. So now we're getting into a different set of properties. Let me call, copy this column over. Select it and copy it over. Now, when I select one column, the properties that I get here on this properties palette are called instance properties. Now you can see right below the type selector, there's a button called edit type. This is called the type properties palette. Now, any change, <clears throat> excuse me, that I make here apply to all columns in my project. I make a change here with the high, with the width, the flange thickness, it's gonna change all of my W10 by 49 columns, okay? Now, over here on the left, right, I can't access that because I'm in the type properties, but I want it to stay open because I want everyone to see the difference. Here on the left, those are instance properties, which means I can have multiple columns that are exactly the same type of column, W10, with the same physical geometry, right? But the instance properties allows me to set differences between this column and that column. You can see here on the base offset for the column I highlighted, it's at a negative nine foot uh, distance. Well, that column next to it could be negative three feet or negative two feet. So that is the difference between type properties and instance properties. Type properties applies to all columns in a project. Instance properties means different options for the same type of column, okay? So good thing to know. Now, let's talk a little bit about this view control bar at the bottom. This is where we set the scale of this view, this window in your house. This is where we set how fine or coarse we want our detail to be. Like, um, if you want to see every little chamfer and every little line, this is where you set it. And this is where you set if you want to see through everything and you want just wires. So this is a good toolbar to get used to because we're gonna use it a lot. As we begin modeling, we're gonna use the tools in there a lot. So get used to that one as well.